Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the March Angels Rest Blessing. My name is Patty Hegwood, and I'm happy to have you here with us today as we explore all the possibilities of how these animals touch our lives. So let's get started. First of all, I don't know if you can hear the beautiful chimes, but we have uh, those good March winds blowing through here today. <laughs> And that just also brings to mind change and all the change that spring brings. And also a bit of an uncovering of what, you know, we've all been kind of uh, hibernating through the winter months. And when you come out of the winter months, sometimes there's some, some thoughts that begin to percolate as we move into the new season. So one of the things that I was thinking about, and that is one thing for certain, I know for sure love never dies. Memories may fade, but the feelings, the ping on our hearts, that never goes away. Once we love and we share our heart and our home with one of our fur feathered or slithering friends, our lives are not the same anymore. There's a certain alchemy that occurs. And when they leave, they take our love but they don't take the changes that were made in our hearts. Perhaps that's what is the saddest part of all. Besides not having them in our life, we also experience the loss of who we were when we were with them. I guess this is why it's so important for us to hang on to those memories. They hurt at first, the photos, the toys, the memories of coming home and the sofa's been chewed just a little bit. Uh, the way Sally would pick up her leash and bring it to me. There's knowing glances and, and looks that conveyed paragraphs without ever uttering a word. These creatures teach us things about ourselves we never knew were possible. And yes, we make changes for the better. We huddle together on cold, blustery nights. We pull stickers out of fur and paws. In essence, we become more caring and our hearts grow exponentially, making that heartache even greater. I found a toy last week that belonged to my cat, Kumar. He's since passed. And he was a wee little snotty fur ball when I found him washed up after the Hurricane Katrina. His little head hung over and he was almost on the verge of giving up. But Kumar ended up living with us for 15 plus years, <laughs> delivering love and, and, and mayhem and a knowing look that made me realize that his soul was quite possibly much older than mine. His toy was Snakey, <laughs> and although the, the dogs would chew the tail on Snakey, Snakey prevailed. We would stitch Snakey together, and Kumar would walk off with his, uh, I called it his meowly sounds. It was kind of a half meow, half growling sound, and walk around the house with Snakey in his mouth. So the other day, I was going into my car, and I opened the glove box and Snakey was in there. And I must have put him in there, I don't know, for some reason. And I had a bit of a grief burst. You know, when you see in the, your pet's favorite food in the dog food aisle at PetSmart or Petco or one of those places and all of a sudden you find yourself just, you know, crying in the middle of the aisle and you don't know why or when you run across something that you just forgot, an old photograph or those good old Facebook memories that pop up and smack you right in the forehead. And then I began to laugh because I began to think about him walking through the house going rrr, 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 with a snake in his mouth. So suppose we have to give ourselves a minute, a minute to allow ourselves that understanding, the understanding that once sadness begins to fade, 
that joy and spark that was Kumar has changed me forever. And now he walks beside me in a way that's just different. But there are little reminders everywhere. And I guess what I'm trying to say to you is don't give up on those reminders because ultimately they're going to deliver back that joy. And they're going to help you remember all those cool things and who you were when you were with them. Using your squeaky little voice, giving them a bunch of little names, making songs about who they are. <sighs> so I now smile when I see Snakey. He rides on the dashboard of my truck. And he's a reminder of a love that once was by my side. And I get to hold on to that part of whimsy that lives inside of me because of him that will never go away. Hello, everybody. My name is Josh, and I'm the manager here at Angel's Rest. Uh, thank you all for coming today. And uh, at this point, I will reflect on some of the sanctuary animals that had passed on for this month. In Dogtown, we lost Maggie May, Daya, Scrappy Doo, Boyd, Toon, and there was a litter of puppies that we unfortunately lost, Yang, Meredith, Kepner, Zola, Warren, Addison, Avery, and Derek. In Cat World, we lost Sir Shamrock, Juanita, Nico, Naomi, Nova, and Teddy. In Pigs, we've lost Ella, Simon, and Baby. And in the Parrot Garden, we lost Beehive and Johnny Tsunami. And as staff and members, or staff and member placements, we had lost Kiki, Katie and Lou, Bindi, Tipsy, and Booger. And for the tributes that were sent in, Callie and Addison lost their dog, Piper, and Liz and Sierra lost their bunny, Buddy, this week. Rest in peace. Now there was a few stories sent in, which I'll read right now. Liza was the sweetest pocket beagle ever. Cancer took her life at the age of eight years old. We miss her so, so much. Knowing she is now playing under the rainbow gives us comfort. Love, Kevin and Doris. Dex wrote, Lily was my very first bottle baby and will always hold a place in my heart. She was a feisty diva at times, and while her hiss and growl could make grown men tremble, she was a lovable sweetheart to me and anyone who gained her trust. I miss my little pinhead terribly. Rest in peace, sweet Lily. And Brianna wrote, Thorsey, you were my soul cat from the second I saw you at the shelter. My tiny kitten with his tuxedo and mustache. I thought we would have much more time together, but I will miss you every day. Hi, I'm Stacy. I'm visiting from California, here to volunteer. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Gimli. Uh, he was a birthday present from me to me. Um, <laughs> he was a little tuxedo cat that I saw uh, at an adoption. He was kind of the underdog. Everyone else was getting all the attention and I saw him and I thought, okay, that's the one. Um, and he was my first cat. I had always considered myself a dog person. Um, my husband as well was kind of really wary uh, about bringing in a cat to our home. Um, but he was a world traveler with us. Uh, we used to joke that he was, you know, a better traveler than most humans. He loved coming to vacation with us. Um, and he would have loved coming here too. Uh, Gimli, we really wanted him to 
be around forever. We had heard of stories of cats living till they were 30 and we were really ready to um, see him through that. Uh, but he unfortunately passed away when he was nine. So we only got six years with him. Um, and we were really excited for him to meet um, our future kids, uh, but he didn't get to. Um, but we know that he's gonna be watching over um, when our first one is born in August. So yeah, um, we miss him. And uh, I know that he's gonna look after our little one when she's born. Hello, my name is Nora. I'm going to read a poem by Mary Oliver called Mysteries, Yes. Truly, we live with mysteries too marvelous to be understood. How grass can be nourishing in the mouths of lambs. How rivers and stones are forever in allegiance with gravity while we ourselves dream of rising. How two hands touch and the bonds will never be broken. How people come from delight or the scars of damage to the comfort of a poem. Let me keep my distance always from those who think they have the answers. Let me keep company always with those who say, look, and laugh in astonishment and bow their heads.
I want to thank you all for coming out today. As you can tell that these little spirits are running free right now with all the wind and the chimes. And I hope that I hope that you all remember that you are you are better off for having loved than for not having loved at all. And take those memories and turn them from tragic remembrances into the fun and love and joy that lives inside of your heart. Because that's, that's how we change. That's how we grow. It's through communicating with these guys on their level, their language, and then you create your own language together. So it's not a surprise that the poem I picked for ending this session is called The Alchemy of Love by Rumi. You come to us from another world, from the beyond the stars and the void of space, transcendent, pure, of unimaginable beauty, bringing with you the essence of love. You transform all who are touched by you, mundane concerns, troubles, and sorrows dissolve in your presence, bringing joy to the ruler and ruled, to peasant and king. You bewilder us with your grace. All evils transform into goodness. You are the master alchemist. You light the fire of love in earth and sky, in heart and soul of every being. Through your love, existence and non-existence merge. All opposites unite. All that is profane becomes sacred again. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.